Uh, so this afternoon we've got Norm with us from Seller Toolkits. Hi, Norm. And we're Hello. Going to, hiya. So we're going to look at the replenish sheet or the replenish tab. Now we've already looked at the report, which is fantastically interesting, and you can choose which days and play with all your metrics. This is where you go if you want a really quick look about uh, which items um, to replenish and just want a really quick um, indication of, of what's out of stock and what you need to buy more of. So I'll pass it over for Norm to go through. Okay, thank you, Emily. Right. Um, first of all, um, the, the replenish page is already ordered with the top one, the, top, the, order, the items at the top being the ones that are most urgently cry, required to replenish. Uh, so if you look on here, you see that orders, and you've got the orders over the last seven days, 30, uh, 14 days, 30 days, nine in life. So you can see that on here, it says you've had in the last seven days, 13 sales. However, you've got none available and none inbound. So it's saying, you know, there's a transfer of 12. Now that transfer of 12 could be transfer of Items that are inbound, they're on the way into a, a, another FC. Um, transfer is always a bit odd because it could sometimes it's transferring to a customer or transferring from inbound to you, uh, to, to the former. But what you're having, what you're seeing here is that you've got none available yet you sell 13 a week. So if you would have been keeping an eye on these all the time, you would never have got into this situation. You'd, you'd always be replenishing your items. So, so the order is, is that you, as you've, as you've paged down, get them. So here's, you've got 10 orders, none available, eight orders, none available. So as you go down, it's the, you, these are still high in the order of needing replenishing, but the further you go down, if you go right down to the bottom list, you're going to find those where, you, you've probably not replenished for certain reasons. Uh, like, for instance, you've had nothing in the seven days, nothing in 14 days, 30 days. In fact, in the last 90 days, you've only had two, you've got none available. And the charts here six, uh, show that. They show that you're just, they're, they're putting down or flat, meaning there's nothing really going on with this, with this, so you probably don't need to replenish. But that's why it's at the other end of that list so no, if you keep in mind sorry so if your budget's a little bit tight or your time is tight what what do you suggest people just look at the first two pages well you, exactly exactly you you go to the, you go, just go through your first few items where you believe that uh, we, you can see that the items are your fastest sellers and the ones that you're they're the fastest sellers where you have nothing available Okay. And that's what you'll see with this. So, you, you know, you, you go through these and work out whether you need to replenish, you can replenish. And uh, what you would do is, what we'll do, you can go to the max down the bottom. So we'll get away from those that are really live and what we're using at the moment for security reasons. So you, if you decide that, for instance, item, you're never going to replenish, you don't want it on this list anymore, you can just click on the hide item and it won't show on your list anymore but it will still be there it'll still be you can say show the hidden items so if you click on the show hidden items these are all the items that you've hidden in the past and if you wanted it to unhide you just click it to unhide it and it'll go back into your list so i've but got what, a really sorry i've got a really unique approach to pre replenishable so unless i buy it on the clearance rack or i know it's discontinued i treat everything as a replen until i'm told otherwise does stk have the same approach so what, everything so yeah. everything everything will go into the once, once you're out of stock or something everything will go into the replenish tab until you tell it not to Yes, exactly. So, so you're saying like I, I'm never going to replenish this. So you just hide it and, and it, you get rid of it from your list. Of so you don't list. have to find your replenishables and add it to this tab. It automatically adds everything. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Tab. SDK. This is just totally automatic. SDK yeah. sort of has worked out that you're doing a lot of sales, but you've got you don't have enough available to to. Um, the amount of sales that you're currently making so if you if you have available five and your seven day sales were seven it would appear on this list but it would appear further on down yeah okay. because but you'd have to keep going down because what, what would happen that if you were 
constantly on this on your replenishables and you're always adding uh, adding your items to um, Amazon, then you're not unlikely to see a variable inbound at zero. If you have sales of 12 a day or 12 a week, then you're more than likely going to have a variable 12 yeah. or more. And therefore, if that's the case, it won't even be on this list at all because you've got enough to furnish that amount of time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so what you're doing then is you're hiding the item you don't want. Now, if you hide an item and say three months later, it's, it's, it's Christmas time and they're always buying Quality Street, for instance, and you've always you, you, you've got loads of Quality Street, but it comes out as replenishable in January. You're thinking, no, I'm not going to replenish that in January. So I you just do a hide. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So you hide it. So it's gone. Now, what will happen is that the following Q4, you say, no, I'm going to get all the advent calendars again and, and the quality strips again, and you add them, and then you're going to worry that they're not going to be on your list. Well, no, that's true. What happens is that it will, STK will notice that that store has come live again, you've replenished it, and it will automatically hide it for you. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That saves, yeah. goodness knows how. Saves, saves you, exactly. So it's there, it's back and says, right. I can see you, you're re replenishing, so I've unhid it for you, and it will appear on the list if you're running out. So, so could I give my VA, <coughs> excuse me, access to uh, my STK in September and get them to look through all my hidden stuff to see if anything's worth selling like this time next year? Yeah, exactly. That's right. You could go, you go so you'd say go to your, your show of hidden items that we've got there and then go through all of those items. So I've got quite a few. Um, because because th there. those items are in the same order. Those items in the same, are going to be in the same order. So, you know, you like, you like these are hidden items and you're showing that first one that you had 12 orders in the last seven days. But if you're looking for something that you hadn't sold for for a long time, you'd have to go to the bottom of the list. Yeah. And in fact... This generally only this with 90 days. So if you were looking for something you can sell for a year, it's probably not going to be showing on this list anyway, because it's, I'm not, you know, if you've not um, replenned in, in 90 days, it's quite obvious. It's, it's hidden. You know, you've not hidden it. Right, it's, okay. Yeah. So if you had Quality Street, it's not really going to show on here until you actually bought the quality street. So what you're right. saying is probably not really going to work. Okay. Um, and then what you've got then is some, if, if you, uh, on your hogs, you put your supplier and your supplier link, then you'll have that link here. You'll have your supplier link there. So all you need to do, if you were going to uh, replen this item, you can just click on here. It will take us to... where you bought it from and it's still a product no, no longer available here for instance so we'll just go back um smith for instance there's no link on this one so i can't link through um this item here i can click through to smith's toys here see if it's still available Still available, it's available at £7.99. That was the price we bought it for last time. There's your unit price there, so you know that unit price and your cogs and your the price you're paying for at the time is still all there. So you can uh, it'll you can do some calculations there. I think because this is so old, so it's coming up with a, a profit. Of, sorry, I've put in the unit, unit price. So, say if you're still at £22. Um, you're going to be making a profit of 556. But say that item had gone up to nine pound. I'm going to type in your nine pound ninety nine in there to see if it's still profitable. And at nine ninety nine, this item is still profitable. So you can do, just like you know, on inventory, you can type in all what you want. If you want a profit of at least two pounds, for instance, Okay. Then yeah, it's going to tell you what price you need to sell it at 1921. Or if you if the current price on Amazon is is 17 pounds, you can do you know. So it's all the same calculation. So if, if you, it was nine pound 99 now and selling for 1721, your profit is only going to be 64p. So that, that right there and then you can work out whether you actually really want to replenish it or not. 
and press the unhide button if you decide you do want to do it or it's back in stock or you like it again just simply yeah. press the unhide button just unhide it and it comes back and it, yeah, so it's not there anymore it's gone into, into um, so unhidden. how did you go from there's another one down there with a link how did you go from this replenishing sheet this replenishing tab to the product how do where do you put the earning center in there where do I what? Sorry. Sorry. Where do you put You've got the early learning center in there for the for them. If you click that through, I imagine that would take you to that website. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Where, right. do, where, where do you where do you? All right. Where okay. You? So that's on that's on your cog. So it's easy, either on your cog sheet, you put your supply and supplier link in there as you're purchasing, um, or you can put them directly into the into the cogs on STK. You just like cut and paste the link from your URL on your browser throw it into the cog or the cog sheet or the cog and then if you put it in there it'll appear here and you can just click through oh, okay yeah because because like because when i first started doing my cogs i didn't add the website in because i didn't really see the value in it but the more i do it it's the it's one of the most just whiz along on, on your on your uh, rows and i think it's towards the end just simply website and just put the link in it's done isn't it it's really simple for you yeah exactly exactly and you, you yeah, exactly. And it's there. It's, it's for your information all the time that you click through to that store all the time. It's the same on the cost of goods uh, page, you get cost of goods, you can go to that page and you can click through to the item from there as well. So it's, you know, it's, I, it's, it's information that you put in on your cogs and then it can be used so nice and easily within SDK. Yeah, it's worth taking that minute when you put your cogs in. I think. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, we do it all the time. We we have all the information, you know, the bundle size, the where we bought it from. You know, obviously your cogs, your de delivery charges, and and everything like that. Is the more information you got within on your spreadsheet, you might as well put into SDK yeah. into the spreadsheet on SDK or into the cogs on SDK. But then it's all there. You've got it there at a click of a button. You don't have to like start rushing. I say, yeah. oh, I've got, a, I've got for this if you, this particular item. You say, oh, I should, um, I should uh, re replen this item. If you have not got your link there, then you've got to find your spreadsheet, do a search for school or the haze in. And then get your link or whatever, however you made your links. And then you go through all that faff when it's just, just put it where you purchase it, put it on your cog sheet, and then you've got it all handy so within this. Team. What does the position mean? It's got, if you look at the, that Woody, you've got a three and a two in the two in the brackets. What does that mean? Three and a two, where is it? Oh, then, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's the same that you see on inventory. So you'll see that inventory, that means that you are, in position three, or last time this was updated, you were position three on the listing overall offers that are available at the time. But two in brackets is that means that you were the second prime. So um, of three, one was um, uh, merchant fulfillment, not prime. So you're the second prime out of three current offers. So if I had Lego or something that had shot up to like 97 in brackets 42, I'd <laughs> that. that's another really quick. Yeah, exactly, quick exactly. No, no, yeah. thank you, that's saturated. Yeah, yeah. And it's telling you what the buy box was last time. So it was 1698. Uh, and it's telling you what your previous unit price is. So, and they are reflected down here in this calculator is here as well. So no, you can change that, box. doesn't it? Everything links to everything else. So you so you can have a look at. So you've got your three dots. That will take you. Where does that take you to the orders section? No, what that does is that um, if, you, if you the item we were showing earlier. So say say for instance this became eight ninety nine. Yeah. Um, and you click on here. What that shows you is what that would look like oh. with the cog on all the other marketplaces. Okay. That's interesting. So it's now saying now, like now that your cog has gone up to number thirty-seven, there and what the profit is here. But as you can see it across all of the other marketplaces, now this isn't live, obviously in other marketplaces, which is why it's showing zero. So, but then you'd have to just, like work out, well, what do I need to sell it for to make a profit? You know. Oh, okay. So it's a quick way to so jump just, to all the other marketplaces. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. 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 And then come out of there. Yeah. So, the, so this is showing your main marketplace, whether that's UK, DE, US, CA. Um, but yeah, if you want to see all your other prices with the new cog, 
you know, because that's your new cog. Your other cog, you might have, your prep costs may have gone up to 50p instance. And so if that's the case, you just go into, um, let's say, let's put this in 9.99 and, and 50p. Again, you do wow, that. that. the profit like that. Uh, yeah, it's up to 10.49. So, you know, so you're making 48 now on that item. So it's just so you can see exactly what all the it's order market places. I guess, isn't it? Because just because something was a brilliant buy three months ago and three weeks ago doesn't mean it's a brilliant buy today. So there's lots of little indicators there to help you to decide whether you want to replenish. Yeah, them. you've got everything there to, to, to work out exactly what you need to do for your replen and, and, and whether to like say, well, it's not worth it at the moment until next year, you know, whatever. But um, there's, there's plenty of information. You've got everything there. You know, you've got your link through your store. Is it available? If it is, how much is it? Type your new price in. Type current price in. Well, the buy box price is already there, so that's already there. If your logs have gone up and changed, type them in. See if it's still worth buying. I always say this to you. Can you break it? Can you type whatever you need to in there? Can you break it? You, you cannot break it. Type anything you want. You can, you just, as, as you just see, if you type in something invalid, it's going to say valid. And that's as, bad, as far as it's going to get. Awesome. So um, if somebody was new to uh, STK, is there a way they can try this out? Is it, is it quite an easy thing to bring your, to bring your SKUs over? Just, just, you don't have to do anything. I mean, you just sign up and then STK bring all of your... Uh, data in from Amazon. Um, oh, wow, so you don't have to sit there and go back and enter all your stuff in the past. You just just pops it all in for you. Everything's going to be there. The only thing you need to do is SDK to make it like do work out your exact P and Ls is to enter your cost of goods. There is nothing else you need to do. That's fantastic. And did you say there's a 14 day free trial? I've got I've got a link to that. I'll put that underneath. Um, exciting stuff. I love the replen tab. I, most of my business is based around replens. So this is like, this is one of my favorite. I used to use the reports quite often and I still do sometimes for like bulk um, sourcing sessions. But if I, I look up this sheet um, every morning just to keep making sure that it's got, um, there's nothing in there that I want to replenish that I'm missing really quickly. Yeah, well, replen is very important. I mean, for any retailer, that's your bread and butter. Yeah, because you've done the hard work to find the item. Why would you not keep going? Why would yeah? Keep going, keep most, going, most exactly. Hard work. Yeah. Fantastic, brilliant. So uh, this will be this will be in the YouTube channel with the other playlists. I think we've done most of the slide um, tabs to STK now. If anyone's got any questions, add them below or find Norm and I in one of the groups, and we'll be able to help you out. Until next time, thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.